question before us today is, is there a way to have your mind or the eye aware of the centering with God and also be working on a computer program, let's say, suggesting that such an action is almost impossible. This is the heart of the matter. This is the very purpose of the fourth way teachings, which take place in life, spiritual work in life, as opposed to retiring to a monastery where the conditions are so much more favorable for a remembrance of the holy, the sacred, or an ashram, or a quiet place in the country. Gurdjieff knew that most people had to deal with the chaos of life, the drama, the stimulus everywhere, the distractions, the noise, the frenzy. And it is in that world, the world that we live in, where we have to make a living and function, that the spiritual life is meant to take place. This is perfectly illustrated by Brother Lawrence in his classic, The Practice of the Presence of God, where he tells us that whether he is in the kitchen in the midst of the noise of the pots and pans, or in the chapel on his knees before the altar, it is the same for him that constancy of communion with God of remembrance of the sacred is unaffected by the externals. And this is what we are aiming for. This is possible for us. The teachings I share with you offer the tools to find our way there, to overcome the seeming impossible odds and obstacles that are constantly around us the heavy traffic, the uh, negativity around us, the fact that at most jobs, the idea of identification is a good thing. One is expected to be caught up in the concerns and worries and gossip taking place there, that if we are not that engaged, then we are fired because we are not part of the team. And this is where true personality comes in, understanding how to balance that out so that one can remain invisible in one's spiritual work and play along in what is necessary without selling out completely or losing our peace as everyone else around us does. So this question is one that is a paradigm for us. The idea of working at the computer, which requires such focused attention, is a perfect one because it gives us the opportunity to understand that focused attention does not mean becoming lost, becoming immersed or drowned even in that which we are doing, even while remaining precise in the awareness of what needs to be done. If it were otherwise, we would be required to cut ourselves off from the very source of our existence, to lose that time given to the job and be unaware that we are existing in that moment. Those lost moments happen to us every time we are identified and caught up in imagination and momentums that pull us away from the reality of the present, from the consciousness of living in this now that we have only now and that will be gone in an instant. So this is an urgent task. Everything is at stake. Are we alive and present to our existence or not? Are we conscious of God, which is existence, or not? 
Many of us compartmentalize our lives. A little spirituality here, the work here, the entertainment here. But it is a false view of reality. So how do we do this? How do we give our attention without giving ourselves away completely? This is where the fundamental ideas of the work come in. This idea of divided attention means that you are giving the focused attention necessary to the task at hand while allowing some to be expanded out into your surroundings, into being present in that chair, into the birds singing outside, into life around you, into this now of your life, and not completely lost in that laser beam attention. This is a practice that anyone can do. It is a matter of choosing not to be identified and not to give way to familiar patterns of behavior, not to assume that there isn't another way to do it. And as we understand the importance of not losing ourselves, or to put it in work terms, of self-remembering, of being conscious of our existence now, of who we are in this moment, rather than worker bees that have no independent existence from their work. As we understand how critical this is and frame it in the ultimate necessity of remembering the holy, which opens life up to us fully, then we can find the motivation to fine-tune our attention, to keep remembering to remember, to not allow ourselves to be completely lost to such an extent that we do not really exist in that moment. We are just functioning. This is a tremendous spiritual opportunity and discipline that is not as hard as it seems. When you pull yourself out after having been lost for a time and realize that you, you didn't know where you were for a while, you find yourself breathing more deeply. You know the expression, don't forget to breathe. You find yourself relaxing. You find yourself adjusting your body and your emotions, your mind to live a more balanced presence in this moment. This is extraordinarily healthy. This is inspiring. This enables us to work even better at the task that we have before us. We assume so often that giving it our all is the only way to do it and with an intensity that overwhelms all the rest of us, as opposed to understanding that in this situation, we give it the intellect, we uh, give it the physical elements that are necessary, but the emotions remain ours, separate themselves out, because we are still present to our existence, who we have been, our childhood, our mortality, and the fact that this task before us cannot take over and claim our life for us now, or from us in this moment. We have to value the critical importance of each passing moment. It is in such a moment that we can have an experience of grace that changes everything. But we have to be receptive to it. And we cannot be receptive if we are buried in our labor to such an extent that we are unaware of anything else. So 
when you approach your work, begin perhaps with a prayer, begin with a moment of remembering the bigger picture of your existence, and approach it in peace so that it doesn't eat you up, it doesn't take all of you. This is divided attention, and it can serve as a tool to bring you back out of that vortex in which we are pulled by uh, that which attracts our attention, that which demands our attention. We can work with even better precision if we have this kind of balance. One of the errors that we operate under most of the time is to think that a degree of identification is necessary to do work well that we must engage with some that we must engage with some level of intensity to accomplish the job and yet what that really is is the misuse of energies using the wrong center for a particular job for instance if you need to say cut a tree down you want to use your moving instinctive center. Simply use the strength of the body. But if you're using your emotional center to cut the tree down and bang away at it with rage or frenzy, you can see that that is the wrong energy for the task. And we are constantly doing that sort of thing. If we can develop the discernment and sensitivity to use the right center, the right energy for the right task, we save ourselves immense amount of lost life force. Not to speak of all the other side effects that come from that. So that kind of conscious awareness is what we are seeking to develop. And it allows us to have a proper use of our attention, which always leaves space for self-awareness, remembrance of God, being in the moment. As soon as it gets overly intensified, we are using the wrong energy. We are pouring in gasoline on the fire, if you will. And to find that proper balance is precisely what the fourth way calls becoming a balanced person, or in its terms, a man number four. Because we have understood objectively which center to bring into play at which time. This is a mastery of self, and it's results are infinite because it enables us precisely here to be conscious of the deep things of life while doing the ordinary things of life. Our friend asks a connected question about stripping away the ego and the things of life and being left like a person in the desert. The question becomes what would God be. In those nights of stillness by the fire, would I even seek God? Would God seek me? Or would I be so close to God that the I am would just be the it is? While it is true that in the quietness, the simplicity, the naturalness, and the barrenness of such a moment, there is a larger sense of connection with life around you, perhaps, a freedom from thoughts and stress, perhaps. Nevertheless, the shepherd or the warrior who does that down through time is not any closer to God. He may be closer to some peace, to some more natural way of living. But the encounter with God is a transformational encounter into 
compassion and mercy into sacrificial love, unconditional love, which has nothing to do with being in the quiet of a deserted place. That just gives us an opportunity to be more open to it in order to seek it, to communicate with it. If there is no communication, then it is emptiness. And as for whether God would still even seek us, the answer is absolutely. That in every moment of existence, with every breath that we take, with every act of free will, with every perception of the senses, there is this, these energies of God reaching out to us, seeking to connect with something within us that seeks back. Seek, knock, ask. These are not good ideas. These are axiomatic, foundational to our humanity. Going against the grain of mere physical mortal existence in order to be illumined by spiritual reality. An effort is required, an effort of desire of the heart, an effort of heightened spiritual awareness, an effort of choosing against lower impulses all the time wherever we are, under any condition. The advantage of the peacefulness of an environment like that is that we can, in fact, remember to turn to God, who is there waiting for us to walk through the door.